So let's look at some examples of times when soft factors may make the difference for applicants with less than desirable numbers. On the screen, you can see actual admissions data from past admission cycles from two different schools. At LSAC.org, some, yet not all, but some schools actually share applicant profiles like this. To find it, simply go to LSAC.org, click on the Choosing a Law School option on the Pages banner, and then click on ABA Approved Law Schools. From there, you can click on specific schools and scroll through their profile to see if they include a graph like either of these anywhere in their profile. All right, back to my example. So in the middle of the page, you see the profile of a school that received over 1,500 applications in the application cycle reflected. The school actually also had a class um, size of right over 100 students, which means that less than 10% of applicants matriculated. Um, the median LSAT score for the school was a 164, and the median GPA was a 3.88. Looking at the 25th percentile, you see that the LSAT score was a 157, and the um, 20th 25th percentile GPA was a 3.42. However, when you look at what kind of applicants had a possibility of being admitted, you'll see that it included folks that had an LSAT score at least 10 points below the median and maybe seven points below the 25th percentile. Um, similarly, with regard to GPAs, you see that despite the median GPA being a 3.88 and the 25th percentile being a 3.42, there were candidates with GPAs between 2.5 and 2.74 that stood a chance of being admitted. Now, why is this? Well, I'll discuss that a bit more later, but for now, I just want you to make note of the fact that all a median is, is the number where half of the students fell below that and half of them fell above it. Um, as an underrepresented minority student, it is definitely possible to be about 10 points or so away from the median number and, st and still get into a law school. 